Welcome to this Access Anatomy screencast from the University of Leeds that's going to outline the anatomy of the liver. So first of all let's start by drawing out the anterior or the diaphragmatic surface of the liver which is tucked underneath the diaphragm up in the right upper quadrant of the abdomen. It can also actually pass through the midline and pass into the left upper quadrant. And here we can see the anterior or the diaphragmatic surface of the liver. We can see that emanating away from this anterior surface is one of those peritoneal ligaments and this is known as the falciform ligament. Remember the peritoneal ligaments are double layers of peritoneum and this falciform ligament is formed as the peritoneum covering the anterior surface of the liver is reflected away from the liver surface and it passes towards the anterior abdominal wall. So here we have the falciform ligament. Running in the free edge of the falciform ligament, so this portion here, that's the inferior limit of the falciform ligament, the part that is passing towards the anterior abdominal wall here, it is slightly thickened, and this thickening is due to the ligamentum teres, the ligamentum teres. And this is a remnant of an embryological structure known as the umbilical vein, and this allowed blood to pass from the mother's placenta into the developing fetus. In the adult, it's fibrosed as we're no longer connected to the placenta, and it's fibrosed into the ligamentum teres, a remnant of the umbilical vein. What this falciform ligament here is doing is separating the liver into two anatomical lobes. Here we've got the right lobe, and here we've got the left lobe. We can also see just creeping out underneath this inferior surface of the liver just part of the gallbladder and we'll see this in more detail when we look at the visceral posterior surface of the liver. To finish this diagram we can draw out some more peritoneal reflections and this time we can draw out the anterior layer of the coronary ligament. Remember ligaments are double layers of peritoneum and here we can just see one of those layers this is the anterior layer of the, peri of the coronary ligament. So here we can see the anterior layer of the coronary ligament. Anterior layer of the coronary ligament. Later on we can see the posterior layer which creates this area on the posterior visceral surface of the liver that isn't covered by peritoneum and we'll know that to be the bare area. So here we can see a layer of peritoneum being reflected from this anterior surface and these coronary ligaments, this anterior layer of the coronary ligament passes towards the diaphragm. Both the coronary ligament and the falciform ligament help to suspend the liver within the abdomen. We have thickenings of these coronary layers, these layers of the coronary ligament, both on the right extreme and the left extreme, and these are known as the left triangular ligament and the right triangular ligament. Again, these are helping to reinforce the strengthening, the holding of the liver to the underside of the diaphragm. Now if we turn to the visceral or the posterior surface of the liver then we can again draw it out here. So here we can see the posterior visceral surface of the liver and we can also see that we have a, a groove here that's separating the left lobe of the liver from the right lobe of the liver and this is known as the umbilical fissure umbilical fissure here and it's called the umbilical fissure because running within this fissure is going to be the umbilical vein or it was the umbilical vein when we were developing and this is going to pass up along this fissure as the umbilical vein was taking blood towards the inferior vena cava and here we can see the inferior vena cava on this visceral surface of the liver. So the umbilical vein was taking oxygenated blood from the mother's placenta towards the inferior vena cava and it ran alongside the liver. 
The blood then entered the inferior vena cava and passed to the developing heart, where it was then distributed to the rest of the body. So here we can see the IVC. We can also draw on here the gallbladder in more detail. So here we can see the gallbladder again. It's just passing underneath the liver, but here we can see the gallbladder, this dilated sac that stores the bile that's been produced by the hepatocytes within the liver and it then passes into the gallbladder where it's stored and it's, it's concentrated. So here we can see the gallbladder. Coming away from the gallbladder here, we can see the cystic duct. And this is important duct that's coming away from the gallbladder and we'll come back to that in a moment. Also on this rissal surface of the liver, we can see two more lobes, a lobe that's sitting next to the inferior vena cava, and this is known as the caudate lobe, and this lobe down here that's sitting next to the gallbladder is known as the quadrate lobe. And now we can see the four anatomical lobes of the liver, the right lobe, the left lobe, caudate lobe, and the quadrate lobe. The final structure, final real detail I want to add to this this diagram is a region on the rissal surface of the liver known as the porta hepatis. The porta hepatis is just this region where structures pass into and leave the liver. This is known as the porta hepatis. And there's three important structures. These three important structures are the same structures that are running within the portal triad or associated with the portal triad. So what we can see first of all is the hepatic artery so here we can draw out the hepatic artery and the branches splitting this goes to the left side of the liver and the right side of the liver so here we have the hepatic artery one of the structures within one of the structures within the portal triad we can now see it here in the porta hepatis another structure i want to Detail is the branches of the portal vein, and here we can see the branches of the portal vein coming into the liver. We've got a left branch going to the left side of the liver, a right branch going to the right side of the liver. And here we can see the portal vein, the hepatic artery. Two structures in the portal triad, now two structures we can see in the porta hepatis. The final structure I want to outline are these hepatic are these hepatic ducts. Here we can see the final structure I want to outline are the hepatic ducts and here we can see our two hepatic ducts. These left and right hepatic ducts converge into a common hepatic duct and the common hepatic duct is then going to unite with the cystic duct to form the bile duct and here we can see the bile duct. So we've got a left and a right hepatic duct forming the common hepatic duct here and here we can see the cystic duct which is passing into the common hepatic duct and the union of these two ducts forms the bile duct and this bile duct then carries bile behind the duodenum, behind the pancreas and it passes into the duodenum. So here we can see the three structures on the rissol or the posterior surface of the liver. The final detail I want to add is the coronary ligament again. Again we can draw the anterior layer of the coronary ligament here as it passes up towards the diaphragm and here again we can see those thickenings which are the anterior which are the left and right triangular ligaments and we can also see that a layer of peritoneum running on this rissal surface is also going to be reflected and here we can see the kind of rough outline of where this posterior layer of the coronary ligament leaves the surface of the liver. So here we have reflection of the posterior layer of the coronary ligament. This means that this area here that doesn't have any peritoneum covering it is known as the bare area. So the liver is covered with peritoneum along all of its surface over all of its surface except for this bare area where peritoneum has passed up and been reflected to the diaphragm and here peritoneum has been reflected from the diaphragm. So hopefully this video has helped to outline the basic anatomy of the liver.